Last time on Distant Shores, we set sail on this Discovery 50 from the Canary Islands, bound for the Caribbean. After nearly a week at sea, we're nearing the latitude of the Cabo Verde Islands, where we hope to find the trade winds. But the wind continues to be much lighter than usual. We get out the spinnaker and prepare to set it for running straight downwind. This spinnaker has a sleeve sock for dousing it, which keeps the sail under control until you're ready to deploy it, and will also help you muzzle it to put it away again. The sock is supposed to be six feet longer than this, and will be replaced when we get to St. Lucia. How gorgeous is that? The rig is working perfect for us, just lining us up dead downwind. We toured this boat in the Southampton Boat Show in a previous episode, link above, but thought it would be good to revisit it now that we've got to know her. She's 50 feet long and has a beam of 26 feet. Accommodations in the hulls feature three luxurious cabins, each with their own heads and separate shower. The main cabin has the nav station, galley and saloon. The U-shaped galley features a four burner stove atop a twin oven with separate broiler and regular oven. Everyone loved working in the large galley with its excellent views. You really feel involved right behind and sharing the great forward views of the nav station. The main saloon was command central and everyone's favourite spot. Turning to the port side, we descend to the owner's hull with plenty of storage under the floors and lining the hull with big cupboards and shelves. Aft is the comfy large double berth and in that hallway are the two large freezers. In this case, we've turned one into a second fridge. Continuing forward is the laundry room with washing machine and the main electrical panel, very neatly set up and organized to a very high standard. Controls for the gen set are here too, perhaps the quietest installation of a generator I've ever heard. The owner's head has a large separate shower, electric toilet, and don't worry, there are blinds for these windows. Also in here, we have the water maker. Not running at the moment, but this will produce about 60 liters an hour. Uh, quite a good unit. And you can direct it into either port or starboard tank like this. So in the owner's hull, we have access to the washing machine, which we've not been using in sea, but great for use in anchor when the boat's not swinging around. Climbing back up to the saloon, we pass the emergency escape hatch, still an unnerving sight for a monohuller like me. Hey, look at that, we caught some pollock. <laughs> <laughs> Nice try. <laughs> so we're making sushi today. And we are in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, a couple of hundred miles from the Cap Verde Islands. And our crew <laughs> are really good in the galley. And today it's Sunday, so for a special treat, Alexandra is making us sushi. I've never made sushi before, so I'm pretty keen to see how it's done. <laughs> So what are the uh, ingredients you have to start with today? So the main ingredients that I use is um, cucumber, mm -hmm. avocado, we have our sushi sticky rice, and of course some freshly caught <laughs> pollock. <laughs> <laughs> so those are ingredients today, and of course we were lucky enough to find um, these uh, sushi nori sheets. Oh, that's right, and we got those yeah. in Las Palmas. And you've made up some rice. Is it a special kind of rice? It is. It's um, su they call it sushi rice. Mm -hmm. It's extra sticky. It's all kind of clumpy oh. and binds together. So when we roll it in the sheet, it'll all stick together. Mm -hmm. We'll put two here like this. And these beautifully sliced avocados can go on here. Okay, so this looks like a California roll. Yeah, right. right. You're doing yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. The first one always comes out terrible because mm. it's the first one. Yeah. yeah. So how much speed are we hoping for? We have hardly any wind. Not today. much wind here today. We're well it's under barely 10 rippling. knots, huh? What's the true wind, Sherry? 
parent is 5.2, 5.5. We've got eight knots true from a stern. Yes. <laughs> What's so. our speed over ground now? Or? Speed over ground. Five knots. Last time we set the spinnaker with the sheets one onto each hull for going dead downwind. But this time we're going to try setting it on the bowsprit and heading a bit further upwind. Perhaps it'll get us more speed. We've rerun the sheets to the aft winches here so Dave can adjust both walking back and forth across the stern. All right, you ready? ready. All right, let's go. Let's launch her. Put on the sheet. Yeah. Looking good there. On autumn. It's just really light, huh? Very light. Very Let's light. Start, start playing with that. Yeah, that looks better. Nice. Expect to get a few more knots of wind. Yeah. Well, I thought the cool. forecast was for more like 10 to 15, not not 9 to 10. Is there enough wind to uh, fill this thing? Or? Sometimes, yeah. Then it's like it's so light that the sail, even this lightweight sail, can't can't stay full. It's kind of variable, light and variable, so it so needs, needs a little tweaking now and then. On here in the cat is a very big stable platform, so it's it's flying quite nicely even in light conditions. There's a little bit of roll, but on a monohull, like our boat's 40 foot, and if we have any amount of rolling going on from the quarter and sea, it can be a bit of a, a challenge to actually fly it, and you're always trimming it to keep it full. Right, because the motion of the boat the motion of the boat it. is collapsing it, you know, depending on the wind conditions. So, mm -hmm. another advantage of a catamaran we're learning. Yes, nice big wide platform. You can, uh, like we did the other day, sail this like a more traditional oak front uh, mm -hmm. symmetrical uh, spinnaker, or you know, we're flying flying this as its main purpose as a geniker, pretty much, mm -hmm. on one side. Could you tell me how far away you saw us on AIS? About 10 miles or so over? Roger, thank you. And um, did you see us from further away over? Okay, Don't pitch it. Uh, take off when it goes. Keeping us on a steady course to try to fill the sail while we get the shots. And now the tough part, bringing her back to land, eh? I'm gonna bring it down to about low battery on my I I iPhone. <laughs> this could be really bad. It's going up and down by itself. I'm not going up and down. That's what I mean. It's doing it with the waves. Yeah, I'm just going forward and backwards. It's us who are going up and down. Oh, this is going to be challenging. You going to bring it in to me or something? I'm going to I'm trying to bring it to you. Oh, careful, Oh, this is not good. All right. Okay. Just go slow. Grab it. Oh, 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 oh. Can we stop the boat? Yeah. Let's engines, the try the engines in reverse. Just leave the sail. Got it! Stop dying. There. Cool. I'm doing down in the middle? There. There you go. Nope, careful. Gotta push it twice. Push it, push it, hold it. Second one, hold it. Push, push. There. there. That, that's never happened before. It would not say, do you want to land? Hey, right. do not ever do that. <laughs> you know, there, yeah. Somebody gets a drink of rum. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>
definitely the lightest wind we've ever had on a transatlantic crossing. We've been lucky to get 12 or 11 knots of breeze from behind, and of course that really is uh, difficult to sail with downwind. But we've had some just magnificent sailing conditions, uh, and a chance to get out the spinnaker, and tonight a magnificent sunset. horizon and when the sun sets we hope we'll see the green flash Mostly Canadian crew. Yay, Dan. Thanks for putting up with us. We got a chicken casserole, we got gravy, we got mashed potatoes. Yeah, we got it's an improvised boaty <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner. We've got layers of chicken strips and stuffing and gravy and vegetables and mashed potatoes. And Alex has an amazing dessert plan for later. So feasting on board, Cameron Zeo. Yeah, it's recording now. It's common on long downwind passages for there to be problems with the spinnaker halyard or the spinnaker blocks and rigging. So I want to go up and investigate and prevent a problem from happening. Yep, up we go. Actually, I love this kind of thing. One of my favorite jobs is snagging or troubleshooting a new boat. And this boat has been so solid and well built, I've been impressed that it has so few creaks and sounds. The noise still sounds like it's above me. Onwards up. Yep. The higher I get above the deck, the more the motion is magnified. By the time I'm 50 feet in the air, it's getting difficult to hold on, and it's still 20 feet to the top. Yeah, I'm okay. I'll just take a minute here. This mast towers 75 feet above the water, the height of a seven-story building. I can reach and lubricate the block, but the shiv where the line exits the mast is even higher up out of my reach, and we'll have to wait until we get into St. Lucia, where it's easy to get at in a protected marina. That was exciting. Okay, on down, down, happy feet. Ah, oh, look at the size of these sargasso rafts, eh? It's day 13 on our transatlantic crossing, and although the winds are light, we feel we should be going faster, and we think it's because of all this golden sargasso weed around the boat, probably getting caught in the rudder.
Didn't lose it to a shark yet, Vicki. Uh, there we go. And so it goes in the water. Yep. There we go. Oh, wow. Jeez. Oh, my God. Oh, look at that. The Bottom head, inspection. Look at, yeah. Look at that. Oh, my God. That's so cool. So is there some of it down there? Yeah, a little, yeah, bit. Yeah. A little bit on the cell drive. Yeah. And the rudders? No, I don't oh, see any of the rudders. Oh, they're clear. clean, eh? Wow. That is amazing. So if we needed to get it off, do you think we could put the engine in Stop. reverse? Yeah, right just back yeah. up a little bit. Right there. Well, that's, that's the, the leg. Sail drive. Sail drive. That's what I was looking for. Just back up. What do we get? Uh-oh. Sargasso fish again. That's what the sargasso weed looks like. All the little berries on it or whatever. We've got this uh, polypropylene line with a bottle tied to it just as the emergency. So if we get into a current, the swimmers can pull on that, just grab that line. So. How was it, Paul? Really? Oh, it was good. Very, it's so amazingly it's clear. You can think that it's like three miles deep here. <laughs> That's amazing, huh? Swimming three miles deep water. I guess we're about a thousand miles from the Caribbean and about eight or nine hundred, eight hundred fifty oh, from God. French Guiana. Join us next time as we get the hang of fishing. Oh! Sail day and night with the spinnaker and finish up our three week crossing to the Caribbean. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments if you're planning or dreaming of doing a crossing in your sailing future. Are you interested in the cruising lifestyle? Are you planning to sail away on a cruising adventure? Or researching cruising areas and destinations? Distant Shores is a television series about the cruising life with lots of tips for sailors planning to sail away. This is Oswego, New York. We are entering the Erie Canal system and this will take us all the way from Lake Ontario to the Hudson River, which gets us to New York City plus destination information to help you make your cruising plans. Yeah, I can stand on the bottom. We've been filming distant shores for nearly 15 years and know the fun and challenges of the cruising life. We've made distant shores with you in mind. We include plenty of cruising tips in this travel series, as well as lifestyle segments and hints for sailors heading to exotic destinations. Encouragement for you and your crew to get out cruising. Destinations include the Intracoastal Waterway, the Bahamas, Caribbean, the Mediterranean, Scandinavia, Transatlantic Passage Making, the French Canals, and more. <laughs>